Hello and welcome to Show Up Stand Out Online Visibility Series for Entrepreneurs. Uh, myself, Juliet Stapleton, and Laura DeFranco is in hey. the house. Hi, Laura. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> you're, you're everything, guys, everything Laura is saying is so up my street. And you will, you will discover it today because if you follow, if you watch this show, if you listen to this podcast, if you follow me uh, on Facebook, you would know that this is so aligned because we're going to talk about fear, how to have fun with it. We're going to talk about purpose, the purpose. You know how they always say in every program, including me, we always say tap into your why, tap into your you know, purpose. You need to really like get that drive from your purpose. But there is so much behind that word and we can tap into that because it's a really, really interesting topic. So let me introduce you to Laura DeFranco. Laura is the owner of Brave Healer Productions. She's a brave healer and she's built a powerful community learning to spread their message of health and empowerment in much bigger ways. I actually love this little much bigger ways um, appendix because I think people are playing it small. Exactly. I do too. And that's, uh, you know what, it's, I think if you chose this kind of profession, it's your duty to get your message out a little bit bigger at this point and help more people. <laughs> but it, it's a sort of two, it's kind of two end, ends because as you start showing up, you feel like it's a duty, but it's kind of heavy. Like some people say, oh yeah, but I don't want to do it. But it actually is really empowering yourself and you're growing Definitely. yourself as you're doing this. That's why I love this whole thing. It's very scary. But when you step into it and you become the bigger version of yourself, what it does for you personally is a miracles. Oh, no doubt. I mean, this is a warrior's path and a healing journey. And anybody who has gone out into business on their own, get ready. If you didn't expect the personal transformation, get ready. <laughs> yes. I yes, love that. It's, it's so true. So Brave Healer, where did this come from? <laughs> well, you know, so I'm a holistic physical therapist. I've been practicing for 30 years. But the brave part, right? Like why the brave part? Well, I mean, it really was just stepping up into um, the idea that I needed to share my stories, my real vulnerable stories, so that people would get to know the person behind the practitioner. You know, and so why would they want to come to me for that service? Well, maybe they heard a story that I shared and they're like, whoa, I want that girl. You know, so there's power and healing in our stories and we need to step up bravely to share them. That's the, that's the foundation of why Brave Healer. And interestingly, so the bravery and the subject of bravery, obviously, when you are brave, that means that you're afraid of something. There is a fear and you go through the fear. You know, that's what that's the definition of when you're doing something, you're brave. Yes. Um, and when we were talking about, you know, um, booking this interview, you suggested to talk about how to have fun with your fear. I absolutely yes. love the concept. Now, what what is um, in your own words and in your own, uh, what is your approach? Well, I mean, having fun with your fear is about recognizing that most of the fear you're having, especially as an entrepreneur, is something I call purpose-driven fear. It's a different kind of fear. We all have the primal kind. It's keeping us safe. It's keeping us from harm. And we all need that. And we're all, we all have fear. I mean, there's nobody, right, that doesn't. But fear, I use mine as a compass now. My purpose-driven fear directs me right to the thing that I need to do next to um, live the life I crave. And so it's really, I want people to understand like it's the difference between this purpose-driven kind and that other survival kind that our brain is constantly rolling from. We have to reprogram that a little bit. So having fun with it, like people hear that and they're like, what? Like how can we have fun with fear? Like, well, when you recognize it's just your inner critic, it's that mind stuff that's getting in your way, you can laugh a little bit, you know? It doesn't have to all be so serious. <laughs> I think, of course, there's, um, you know, some people have a very, uh, like, hook up on status, and they think that if they laugh at themselves, that that sort of diminishes their status and, and how other people see that. Not me. <laughs> I, I have an absolute <laughs> joker, you know, kind of mind, and I found that, um, and it's great that we're talking about it, because one of my sig signature programs is a uh, um, live video challenge. So I run this 11-day live video challenge, and we 
are dealing exactly with that, the inner critic. And people, I find in general, if you, if you asked me, like what people really are um, resisting, they're all picking on themselves. They're picking, yes. they're picking on themselves. They're saying, they're saying too many <laughs> us, too many uns, too many, you know, they're blabbering, they're forgetting what to say. That's me. I've been doing this for three years. I had one five minute video where I said, you know, about 25 times. <laughs> and I still have it out there. But, but I think that you, what you said is brilliant because there, are, there is a difference between a fear and just labeling, you know, um, uh, being afraid of judgment and being, you know, critical, too critical to yourself and not allowing yes. you to be human, imperfect, you know, just like humans are not perfect. Oh my um, gosh, yeah. Perfect, perfectionism will paralyze you. It's toxic. So will comparison. And I have a message for those wanting to step up a little bit uh, in a little bit bigger way, your fear of not good enough, it's boring. Like, so like, just come on, let's go, like do it imperfectly because it's right in the middle of the action that you take that you're going to get the clarity and the practice and the mastery for the next step you're going to take. And so people wait to feel motivated and good enough and courageous enough and all that. You know, but the thing is, it's in the action that gets you those feelings. You will never get them beforehand. That is and so, bang on. They say, I'm, yeah. when I'm ready. Right. And you're Forget saying it. readiness comes from <laughs> taking action. When you start right. doing it, you will start discovering that you're more and more ready. But if you're not starting, how can you be ready? Exactly. The, being ready enough, you'll never do it. Um, one of the best things I ever did was I started an online course well before I was ready. I just said, hey, gals, this is a beta. Come join me. You get a discount. Let's go. <laughs> and I that the I was, same thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I will forever thank the coach that told me to do that because it set everything in motion. It was, it was fantastic. Actually, yeah, it's, am yeah, it's an amazing thing. Uh, I remember when I just started, it was only three months. I did some interviews. I did some, you know, posting and I, and, and a coach challenged me and they said, okay, I want you to post this offer before you sell. Be honest that there's nothing in the course yet that you're going to yes. create it, but it's going to be, you know, this and this and this. And I, it was my birthday and I posted on my birthday. I said, I'm going to make a course about how to use Facebook to grow, you know, your visibility. And it's going to be the best, the most authentic, the most working system ever but i haven't designed it yet are you on board 97 dollars. i made a thousand bucks overnight wow. it was a great birthday <laughs> present but it, it was the same thing and you know what it's still the course that is my signature course exactly that's so i have a very similar story gosh i love hearing that i love it i love it i love it because it's kind of like you know if you want to be or if you want to be a great runner, well, go ahead, sign up for the marathon. I, I'm telling you, you will do the training if you sign up. But if you wait to sign up, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> you that, know? that is true. That is true. I yeah. think people, a lot of people undermine the amount of preparation. And actually, you, you mentioned running and marathons. I am not a physical person. You know, for me, I can't even sign up because I'm never going to be ready. Because <laughs> if this is something that terrifies me. It's just not, not me. But it's also, if I did, I would have to commit while I'm signing up to pain, like physical pain, exhaustion, determination, <laughs> tears, uh, hiring somebody to scream at me that you can do more when I think that I can't, you know, because it can't be my husband for obvious reasons. And, yes. you know, these kind of things. And you, people don't think about, they just look at the end result. They see that this person is a brilliant dancer. This person is brilliantly on video, you know, talking so fluently. It took me one year to become fluent of practicing and this yes. whole thing of pain and going through discomfort and getting used to it and not being too hard on yourself because you can't speak another language fluently within two days. You can't do that. It's just physically exactly. impossible and mentally impossible. I love um, that you brought that, that one particular topic up because it scares people that, you know, any form of pain and you're kind of looking that and, and looking at it and knowing it's about to come. I just, just um did a, a poem about pain and the i mean long story short your pain is what makes you moving through it is what makes you the warrior and the teacher and the master and the and 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 you guys fill in the blank it's pain is an opportunity to be a badass you know yeah absolutely what you mentioned <laughs> just earlier that you started seeing fear as a sign and I sign up as well. Um, 2020 is, is the year where I actually purposely drive myself to the areas where I feel that discomfort. And guys, it's just, it's amazing because this discomfort is only initial. 
It's never yes. going to, if you, as long as you go into it, allow yourself to be imperfect, allow, just do it. It's okay. Allow rejection. If it's say reaching out to people or allow feeling scared and critical to yourself when you're doing video or something like that, uh, just allow it for a while. And then after a couple of times, it just gets into this as you start seeing results and you know, like small results, just that, you know, nobody stretched out their hands through the camera and killed you while you had a stone <laughs> at you or, you know, nobody like angrily replied to your messages or anything. Well, even if they did, then just block them. They're just crazy. <laughs> yes. So You know, it's, it's important. And so that brings me then to a, a different, and we have this keyword now, um, the purpose. So you yes. mentioned a purpose-driven fear, which I absolutely love this. And I, I know I'm starting just be, just after this um, interview is going live. I'm starting one of the live video challenges. This is going to be the prerequisite before the challenge because you have to think differently in order to get results. And we're yes. talking about the purpose. And one thing you said to me that really stuck, and I'd love to talk a little bit more about it. You said your purpose has a fear. Face. Yes, purpose and has a face, you guys. We're, we're spending so much time looking for the meaning of our life and the purpose in our life in all the wrong places. It's We're looking in what we're doing, but really it's who we're doing it for. And so when you put a face and a name to your purpose, the fire burns a lot brighter inside than just some cause that you want to lend a hand to or some topic um, that you're not that those things aren't important, but I want you guys to feel the fuel inside of you every single day, no matter what. And the human connection is what will give that to you. So remember, you know, you can just take a moment, like who made you feel like a million bucks? Who said to you, you changed my life. Who made you feel that way? Bring their face and their name into your mind and allow that to be part of your mission statement. That is a great, you know what? I'm going to add a little small strategy that I do. I have a brag, brag book for me, for, for energizing. Yeah, there's some testimonials there. But every time somebody mentions in a private conversation or in a comment, and people do say that. Yesterday we had a mastermind call with a brilliant spiritual um, teacher came in and, and talked about the fear of visibility. And one of the ladies said, you just changed my life because she had yes. an aha moment but that is important and and some, somehow documenting when you were told this is a really good thing because it's very difficult to always you know our brain is very critical and very kind of aggressive and we turn that aggression to ourselves onto ourselves so having that place whether it's a folder on your phone with screenshots or on computer or even print it out and then make a vision board out of it it's yes. really really keeps you in that focused on that connection focused on the, what you're actually doing for, for particular people. Yes, I love that example. It's absolutely perfect. You guys are going to find that when you have somebody like that, what, what is this thing that, you know, you've heard the compliment, but then you just have to keep, it doesn't matter somehow. Well, let the compliment sink in and allow yourself to understand that you actually changed somebody's life. One person is enough one person right so you think about the ripple that you're making in the world from that one person and it really it needs to be enough to drive you every morning when you wake up i love that i love that story of somebody telling you and then you making something special out of it write it down put it in front of your face every day you know record it how, whatever works for you it's important and it's important to remember even uh, make yourself a google uh, reminder if you use i use a google calendar but let's yes. say calendar reminder uh, it can be daily it can be weekly like spend 10 minutes just looking through those screenshots the amount of energy that you draw from that and self appreciation because at the end of the day as entrepreneurs we are sort of forced into pushing and all these words are very negative pushing um forced working hard we need to do all these things, but it's right. the energy we do it with that changes everything. For me personally, and I love the fact that you're talking about who you're working with, who you doing this for, what sort of impact you're making. Sometimes maybe look at the, your current clientele, and maybe they're just a, a collection of people who are not really 
aligned with you. So they don't appreciate exactly what they're doing. That's not their fault. And you don't need to get negative about it, but to find people who do appreciate it and then start finding more and more people like that, it ta- makes a huge difference on you know, how you go to work in a way. You know, I would, I don't feel like I'm working even, even with all the hard work and, you know, scary things. <laughs> and, you know, I do a lot of messenger conversations and things like that. Things that are for an introvert and someone shy is a hard things to do, but it's the energy what you're doing it with changes completely everything. And I find that that, that when you feel down, cause some, we are not, and we are not machines, right? We're going to, we need rest. We need to recharge. We need to internalize. And then we, we open up again. So when you're internalizing, tap into that. It's just really, really a powerful thing. So thank you so much for bringing that whole thing with the purple, the, your purpose has a face. Yes. That's a brilliant <laughs> concept. Um, Laura, I know that you also have a really good resort, uh, resource for uh, entrepreneurs who want to get more exposure, but maybe holding themselves back. So do you want to talk about it a little bit? Yes, please um, come grab the checklist, you guys. In, in my journey, um, I learned the hard way a couple of times. You know, if you're going for the exposure and publicity, but you don't have some foundational things in place when that actually happens, you will be kicking yourself. And so I kind of learned the hard way a couple of times. I'm a blogger and a writer, and I had a blog go viral well before I had my ducks in a row. Oh, my gosh. I was I was crazy with that. So I put together this checklist for you guys, 10 things every entrepreneur should know and do before Oprah calls you guys before. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. It's like, pre- like you have to be in a way. And I know this phrase I'm about to say has a lot of negative connotation to it, but <laughs> it also has a very positive thing. Think, fake it till you make it. That's the law of attraction. When you actually put yourself in the energy and you're preparing things before they happen, you yes. know, um, it's, it's like, you know, if somebody, we are entrepreneurs, so we're not like looking for a job, but I, I read in somewhere I read this great example for um, this this gentleman uh, trying to get a job and every morning he got up he put a suit on he had this briefcase and for 30 days he was doing that even though he was unemployed and he would go out and maybe you know even if he walked walks around pretending that he's going to work and within 30 days he landed a dream job now I know wow. that these stories <laughs> might be exaggerated but we don't know maybe they're not maybe for him it was actually felt like the dream job so that's yeah. the important thing so yes and and these are kind of and foundations are important in everything yes live it now live as if right really important and like oh, what yeah, we a, did we yes. lived it as as if and we said hey i have this course you know who wants on as it's exactly. better but look at you know just tiny investment but it kept us focusing because then we had people that we we needed to uh, provide value because they did trust in us and you know i did a survey uh, afterwards and i asked people who joined there was 10 people that joined and i said why did you join because you didn't know really much about me and you know i didn't have the course why did you join and majority of them said something along the lines you were in my space i absolutely loved your energy i wanted to be at the start of it someday i will say i was there at the beginning Mm, and that gave me so much energy and so much determination and you know really i just felt unstoppable after that kind of answer Yes, I love that. You're, you're so right. It is all about the energy. And so vibing high, you guys, you got to figure out how to vibrate a little bit higher and out of your head with those negative thoughts, living as if you're already there and living inside of the joy very powerfully, right? Exactly. Um, that's contagious. It, you know, people love it. They're drawn to you when you're vibrating like that. It, it's true. It. I know from some people say, for example, um, three years ago, I was dealing with my husband who was very sick at the time. And I was dealing with this uh, sort of dilemma. Uh, are you, how can you energize yourself when something like this is happening in your life? Right. But, but it is possible. And these little things like looking at screenshots of good comments and just tapping into that good energy. And this was the advice that I got then is don't get into the bad energy. Don't give, we, we were dealing with cancer. Don't give cancer any energy focus even if you feel down then go and have a coffee or something for yourself like just feel good about yourself because 
this will eliminate that feeding, that negative energy, and it will bring good things in. And that was the best thing. So when you're dealing with something and you find, you say, how can I live if I'm just, you know, worried all the time about the bills, about everything? You need to find other things that energize you, you know, have fun <laughs> with some things, yes. and, but bring that up. And then the rest starts aligning. Yes. And some people have difficulty jumping from, it's a, such a great point you make that some things going on in your life are not so great and they keep you there. And it's hard for people to jump from that to the joy or to the having fun. So I suggest a middle ground is just coming to a neutral spot with your breath and with some meditation. If you can't jump all the way to joy, no problem. I totally get it. You know, stuff happens in life where we are kind of falling in the pit and there's no way we can jump to having fun with it, right? It's, so just, you know, take up a little bit of meditation, a little bit of breath work, just come to neutral as your first step and tool, and then you'll be able to slide over to the joy a little bit better, easier. And, and that's with everything in life. You know, if exactly. something you want to achieve, most <laughs> of the things you want to achieve success in business, don't listen to people that will say in six weeks, you're going to make 12, 20K a month. If, you, if you're making zero now, it's not going right. to happen that fast. You know, there are some cases, but, but in general, you know, just apply some common sense and just find that neutral whether it's your personal energy, whether it's your business, whether it's visibility, because obviously you're not going to straight away try and get, you know, into Forbes or Oprah's, <laughs> Oprah's guest. You know, there is, you have to come, you have to grow into it because internally, sometimes you're not ready. And so finding that, that space, the comfortable neutral space between is, is absolutely great. The best approach, I think, to growth. Yes, I consider it a space of possibility. I and that's it. a great place to be. <laughs> I love it. On this wonderful, amazing, I am vibrating now so high. And actually, guys, <laughs> when, you're, when you're doing something, like I love my interviews and I always buzz. When you have that buzzing energy, the next thing, go and do something scary because that really <laughs> yes. and that's what I do. Uh, Laura, thank you so much for being my wonderful guest today. I have a link to um, the checklist. Guys, just click on the link now um, and go get the checklist. 10 things all entrepreneurs and authors should have in place before getting more exposure. Let's have fun with fear. Let's think about the face on your purpose and, awesome. uh, and be thank brave. You. And be thank brave. you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. What a great conversation. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you on the next episode of Show Up, Stand Out. It will be next Friday and stay tuned and be visible. See you later.